Hey, what's up guys? The Books here again. Welcome back to Men of War Soul Squad 2 and Rob's Realism Mod back with another battle and this one is going to be extremely special. This battle is not only the last battle of World War 2 in Europe, but it has also been dubbed the strangest battle of World War 2. Super excited to see how it's going to turn out. Before we begin, we're going to actually talk about the background behind this battle so that everyone gets in the right mood. And also, by listening and paying attention to what I'm about to say, you will avoid uh, wasting your time writing comments and weird-ass questions and asking me what the hell's wrong with me, because this battle is super crazy, and if I only just started it off, I'm sure a lot of questions would have come to your mind. First of all, I don't think anyone has made a movie of this battle yet, which is uh, probably the biggest question of my life right now. Why has Steven Spielberg, or anyone else for that matter, not made a movie of this? This is definitely um, a battle and would be a movie that would not be lacking of interesting story. This is one of those where they can make a huge hit out of. It's not just any battle, it's the Battle of Castle Itter. And the way it is, is so insane. I mean, if no one else does, I'm going to start getting on a script... I'm going to talk to the big boys in Hollywood, and I'm going to pump out history's greatest war movie. Oh, man, I would be so excited. But um, do follow me on Snapchat. The username is Diplexeated. This battle was suggested to me by a Snapchatter, or a follower, rather. So there you go. Your dreams can come true. If, if those are your dreams, then perhaps uh, reevaluate your life. But um, I appreciate that, uh, you guys really do uh, do have your wishes, and uh, I'm happy if I can deliver. So, basically, I could read the Wikipedia page, which would take us about, like, 10 minutes, or I could sum it up quickly and let you guys do the rest of the reading if you're interested. I think a big portion of you guys are just here for the action, and that kind of saddens me, but for those of you who really do appreciate history and would like to know a little bit more about it, do read about it after you've seen the video, but first I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So... And uh, get cozy, it's going to be a little while, but do not skip out on this. This story is absolutely amazing. And I keep wondering why someone hasn't made a movie out of this yet. It has all the factors and parts of it to make an historically amazing World War II movie without needing to go all Quentin Tarantino, although I like his movies, you know. But Glorious Bastards and all that wasn't really accurate or historically accurate and all that. So anyway... This could be one of those kinds of movies in terms of all the characters and elements. It's not like straight up saving Private Ryan. But still, imagine it. It would still be historically accurate. Just Okay, let me get to the background story. It's a really romantic and cool story. I don't, I don't know why I keep saying romantic, but I feel like it... I mean, romanticism, it's, it's glamorous in a way. It's not only just storming up a beach and getting shot at by MG42s. Anyway, I better get to it, because it has, like, cool characters, and, and it's, it's almost like a love story between Germans and Americans in World War II, because they fight together, you know? It's... it's anyway. Um, on May 3rd, Svonomir Kukovic, an imprisoned Yugoslav communist resistance member from Croatia who worked as a handyman at the prison left the castle on the pretense of an errand for Commander Sebastian Wimmer. He carried with him a letter in English seeking Allied assistance, and he was to give it to the first American he encountered. The town of Vergel, v Vergel lay five miles down the mountains, but was still occupied by German troops. Kukovic instead pressed on up the Inn River Valley towards Innsbruck, 40 miles away. Later that evening, he reached the outskirts of the city and encountered an advance party of the 409th Infantry Regiment of the American 103rd Infantry Division of the U.S. 6th Corps, Corps and informed them of the castle's prisoners. They were unable to authorize a rescue on their own, but promised Kukovic an answer from their headquarters unit by morning of 4th May, which would be the day after. At dawn, a heavily armored rescue was mounted but was stopped by heavy shelling just past Genbach, around halfway to Itter then recalled by superiors for encroaching, 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 crouch, crouch, encroaching, that's what it is, into territory of the U.S. 36th Division to the east. Only two jeeps of ancillary personnel continued, so they mounted a really heavy rescue party, but had to stop because of the artillery, and they were kind of nudging into territory that the 36th Division was supposed to manage and control, and I think that can create logistical and organizational errors if you kind of combine the two divisions and, and have them operate in the same territory. You, you know all that stuff. Uh, upon Kukovic's failure to return after the 2nd of May uh, and the death of the castle's fleeing... Uh, wait, and the, and the death at the castle of the fleeing 
Last commander of Dachau, Eduard Weiter, Wimmer feared for his own life and abandoned his post. That would be Sebastian Wimmer, the, the commander of this prison. The SS Totenkopf, Totenkopf Verbande, Verbände guards departed the castle soon after, with the prisoners taking control of the castle and arni- arming themselves with the weaponry that remained. Failing to learn of Kukovic's efforts, prison leaders accepted the offer of its Czech cook, Andreas Krobot, to bicycle to Virgil midday on the 4th of May in hopes of reaching help there. Armed with a similar note, he succeeded in contacting Austrian resistance in that town, which had recently been abandoned by Wehrmacht forces but reoccupied by roving SS, most likely the SS troops that actually abandoned this castle. And do not get stuck up on gra- grammatics and grammar and shit, but what the hell does this mean? <laughs> Upon Kukovic's failure to return after the 2nd of May, and the death at the castle of the fleeing, last commander of Dachau, Eduard Weiter, Wimmer feared for his own life, and I mean, we just read that, but what the hell? So I guess what they're trying to say is that Sebastian Wimmer feared for his own life since the commander of Dachau, Eduard Weiter, died during the an uprising or something like that, people fleeing. So I guess he was like, people here are going to rise up or bullshit, so I'm going to just get out, you know? I think a lot of prison commanders would do that when you feel that the, the garrison itself is kind of like starting to weaken and, and the war is going against you. But I think that's what they were trying to say. Anyway, back to the text. Um... He did succeed in co- contacting Austrian resistance in that town, which had recently been abandoned by Wehrmacht forces, but reoccupied by the roving SS. He was taken to Major Joseph Gangel, commander of the remains of a unit of Wehrmacht soldiers who had defied an order to retreat and instead thrown in with the local resistance being made its head, and the local resistance being Austrian resistance. Gangel had intended to free the castle prisoners, but was unwilling to sacrifice the few troops he had in a suicidal attack on a heavily defended fortress manned by the SS. But alas, that wasn't the case. Sebastian Wimmer and the rest of the troops abandoned it after the uh, Czech cook skipped town, so to speak, I guess. Um, he was instead conserving them to protect local residents from SS reprisals, in which troops shot at any window displaying either a white or Austrian flag and summarily executed males as deserters, traitors, and defeatists. Whoa, damn. His hopes were pinned on the Americans reaching Virgil promptly and surrendering to them. Instead, he would now have to approach them under a white flag to ask for their help. Aha. Uh-huh. I do understand. So he wasn't entirely turned at that time. He was just trying to defend the locals against the atrocities of the, the fanatic SS soldiers, not really fight against them, or not really fight with the Americans against them. He was just waiting to sort of have the Americans come in, clean up the SS, and then surrender. But now he had to actually ask for their help. Around the same time, a reconnaissance unit of four Sherman tanks of the 23rd Tank Battalion, under the command of Captain Lee, had reached Kufstein, Austria, eight miles to the north. There, in the main Platz, which is square, like a market square, the, the main area, I guess, of the city, it idled while waiting for the 12th to be relieved by the 36th Infantry Division. Asked to provide relief by Gangel, Lee did not hesitate, volunteering to lead the rescue mission and immediately earning permission from his headquarters. After a personal reconnaissance of the castle with Gangel in the Major's Kubelwagen, Lee left two of his tanks behind to con- but conscripted five more and supporting infantry from the recently arrived 142nd Infantry Regiment. En route, Lee was forced to send the reinforcements back when a bridge proved too tenuous, tenuous, I guess is the right word, for the entire column to cross once, let alone twice, leaving one of his tanks behind to guard it. He set back off accompanied only by 14 American soldiers, Gangel, and a driver, and a truck carrying 10 former German artillerymen. Those German artillerymen ought to be Gangel's soldiers, part of that Austrian resistance, I presume. Um, they were now four miles from the castle. Um, they defeated a, SS, a party of SS troops that had been attempting to set up a roadblock, I presume, to the castle itself. In the meanwhile, the French prisoners had requested an SS officer they had befriended uh, during his convalescence from wounds in itter convalescence i'm i'm having a hard time with some of these words they're very 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 upscale i must say kurt siegfried schrader or schrader is probably the, i'm thinking of uh, schrader from breaking bad kurt siegfried schrader i i usually don't struggle with words i'm on, i'm swedish that's practically german <clears throat> kurt kurt siegfried schrader Schra- <laughs> I gotta drink something, wait. Kurt Siegfried Sch- Sch- <laughs> I can't get it! 
Shra 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 I want to say Schrader Schrader but it's Shra Shra My R is not functioning Kurt Siegfried Schrader 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 There we go to take the charge of their defense <laughs> Upon Lee's arrival at the castle prisoners greeted the rescuing force warmly but we're disappointed at its small size. You see, Lee had to leave a tank behind defending the bridge. He had to send half of the reinforcements back since they couldn't even cross it. So he only crossed it with, like, one tank and all those troops. Lee placed the men under his command in the defensive positions around the castle and positioned his tank, Besot and Jenny, at the main entrance. Lee had ordered French prisoners to hide, but they remained outside and fought alongside the Americans and the Wehrmacht soldiers. Throughout the night, the defenders were harried by a reconnaissance force sent to assess their strength and probe the fortress for weaknesses. In the morning of May 5th, a force of 100 to 150 Waffen-SS launched their attack. Before the main assault began, Gangel was able to phone Alois Meyer, the Austrian resistance leader in Virgil, and request reinforcements. Only two more German soldiers under his command and a teenage Austrian resistance member, Hans Waldel, could be spared, and they quickly drove to the castle. The Sherman tank provided machine gun fire support. That would be the EC-8 right there that was used. And there's plenty more text, but I'm going to read that after or during the battle, depending on what happens. So without further ado, let's click start. Let's watch it all go down. So there's about 16 Americans in total, 11 German Wehrmacht soldiers, including Gangel. And <laughs> the the one man I can't pronounce his name, this is the, the, the previously wounded SS soldier, Kurt Kurt. Siegfried Schrader, Schrader. My R's are not Schrader, 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 Schrader. It sounds like I'm saying S C H A R D E R. Schrader, Schrader. No, that's Schrader. Schrader is good. It's not Schrader. Schrader. Kurt Siegfried Schrader, Schrader, Schrader. Shit, fuck. Okay. Yeah, assault has begun, so I don't think I need to focus all too much on that anymore here come the German Waffen SS troops my tongue is like sometimes it's in R mode where I can say RPG like R R Schrader I'm, I'm talking English and if I activate my Swedish vocabulary we say R not R R is soft R is ringy you know so then I would say Schrader Sch Schrader there you go. That's better than Chader. Chader. Anyway, geez, that is going to make a meme or something. I don't know. Kurt Siegfried Schrader. That'll have to do. Even though you can't hear the R. Maybe you're not supposed to. I'm just going nuts. My tongue is not functioning today. I'm having a speech impediment. Anyway, the Front Reconnaissance SS Party has definitely gotten themselves into some trouble. And, uh,. They're trying to make their way closer to the bridge and the entrance itself. But that EC-8 and the combination of German and American soldiers is working out pretty good for him. Look at that. Oh, man down. This was the only battle in World War II where Germans and Americans fought together. It's also the last battle of, Germ uh, of World War II in Europe, so to speak. And it's been called the strangest battle because of all the... All the, the, the circumstances and all the characters involved. But it's just... I keep thinking about it. This is the third time I'm going to mention it in this video. But it would make for such an amazing movie. You know, like the the guy biking out at a start. You know, trying to find help. Um, failing so, but reaching some other Americans. Then the other guy biking out a second time. Getting to Virgil, where he meets up with the local resistance. And then they go into um, Kufstein, where they meet Lee and his armored battalion. And then they set off because they get permission to move to the castle. Then there's some fighting in between, you know, the, the shelling and the SS party that was setting up a blockade. And then Wimmer, who abandoned his posts, hears about it and then counters attack, counterattacks with about 150 men to try and retake the castle. He fled the garrison because he was afraid of being killed during the fleeing, I suppose. But that wasn't the case, really, I guess. Damn. A lot of SS troops coming in, but that EC-8 is going to mow him down. Look at that. There's only one man in this tank, by the way, and that was also true. He jumped out, though. What is he trying to repair? 
I guess he wants to try and get the tracks. I'm not sure he's got the time for that, because there are Germans everywhere. But he's got some covering fire. This is still going to be Men of War Assault Squad 2. I'm going to, however, get him back in the tank for historical accuracy. When I tell you to get back in that tank, you get back in that tank. And you stay in there. More SS troops are attacking. So far, it's looking pretty good for the defenders. Boom. Wow. The Sherman tank provided machine gun fire support until it was destroyed by German fire from an 88mm gun. It was occupied at the time only by a radio man seeking to repair the tank's faulty unit, who escaped without injury. There he is! Look! And I guess he was trying to repair something. Um, so I, I'm wondering by, by, by it being repaired by only a radio man, or being, sorry, only being occupied by a radio man, was it actually at that time, um, not firing or returning fire at the German SS troops? Possibly. Perhaps the SS troops went in with the 88mm first. But anyway, very cool indeed. And since it was probably a flak 88 they used, would have makes much, much sense if they dragged or rolled in and flak 88 here. So I thought the 88mm pack 43 would make for an excellent addition. Oh, that tank member though. Oh, he shot down. I could have evacuated him, but uh, he's just gonna... This is gonna be very historically accurate in many ways, in terms of many characters, but I think it's gonna be a lot bloodier than the actual battle, despite the fact that many did die. Um, this is definitely gonna be the more hardcore version of it. No one gets out alive. <laughs> Who knows? But the uh, German SS troops are definitely uh, making their way to the main entrance now. This pack came in handy. I think it's going to chill there for a while, but uh, more troops will most likely arrive. I have a lot more text to read up to you, but that will be later when it comes in handy. We got the Kurt Siegfried Schrader. There we go. Schrader. 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 If it was not a sh word before the R, it would just be Srader, 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 and that makes sense. I'm just repeating it, you know, to, to definitely get it in there. But it has got the sh first. And then how can you come at a sh with an R? Rrr. It's like Srader. There you go. <laughs> it's gonna sound ridiculous, no matter the way I say it. Damn. I think this SS soldier, obviously dead by now, probably, but if he was alive at this time, that officer would have been honored. I know that Diplexeded is, is is doing his best to get his name right. Kurt Siegfried Schrader. <laughs> what a hiccup, man. Shit like that that, you know, keeps the trains delayed and not going on time. Was that friendly fire? It sure looked like it. I doubt it, though, but that was close. What? So that must have been that Austrian teenager resistance member. Shot dead. Together with Kurt. I'm just gonna say Kurt in the future. Carbine work there, nice. Carbine, some say carbine. I say carbine, I guess. I say whatever the hell I want. You ain't got nothing to do with that. Me, yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, how's he looking, boys? Oh, we don't like detours, do we now? We don't want anyone going on the outside, but I guess if you have to, you have to. Try and cross the bridge itself. They're taking their sweet time, but there are more German SS troops on the way now. They were slightly low on manpower there after that first attack. Remember that there's gonna be approximately 100 to 150 men attacking today, which is a pretty, pretty big number. I wonder if the very, very small and weak garrison can actually hold that. I think the positions and uh, spaced out, uh, yeah, positions rather, and the, the yeah, just pretty much all comes down to positioning in Men of War. You don't need, uh, you don't need mass or, or manpower or numbers, I guess is the word I was looking for, to win a fight. Damn! He was shot throughout the building. They transformed... They have some particle gun or something that's capable of shooting things through walls. That is pretty cool. In this case, I guess a human. <laughs> Damn, that's some power. Anyway, I think the SS is in their... Not full capacity right now, but they're definitely currently attacking the garrison. And back here we have a fallen soldier. He died. must have died before this man back here. 
So that's all probably just depending on your positioning there. Got a really cool position up here with the BAR. Putting some really good fire on the SS troops that are kind of bunched up there by the main entrance. This guy is getting plenty of kills. Oh, but he shot down. At least two or three. Nice job, though. But the... Uh, wow, the Germans are moving through. This is uh, starting to get a little spooky. We have more German troops coming in. Even more and more. How will the defenders be possible be, be able to do this? Okay, we have Major uh, Gangel back here. Oh, and he's shot dead. How horrible, how horrible indeed. Uh, Gangil died during the battle from a sniper's bullet. Uh, but he was honored as an Austrian national hero and has a street in Virgil named after him. Cool. So that's a little input there throughout the battle. I'm going to do a few more of those as some more things happen. But right now, the, uh, the defenders are definitely still holding. Damn, they're shooting some troops down all the way back here. That MG42 is a menace, even when hip-fired. So we got a German back here. We have another two Germans over here. So I did use accurate numbers, just um, as I guess you, as I really do say, and I can't say it enough. Positioning and spreading units out can give you the feel of a lot of firepower, which is quite commonly used in ambushes and whatnot in order to make yourself appear more powerful than the enemy thinks. Oh, shit, or than you actually are, I guess is the right word for it. Just drop my phone. I don't need to drop it when I have more things to read. So, meanwhile, by early afternoon, uh, word had actually finally reached the 142nd, the desperation of the defender's plight, and a relief force was dispatched. Aware he had been unable to give the 142nd complete information on the enemy and its disposition before the communications had been severed, Lee accepted a tennis player named Borotra's gallant offer to vault the castle wall, run through the gauntlet of SS strongpoints, and ambush ambushes, apparently, to deliver it. He succeeded. He requested a uniform, then joined the force as it made haste to reach the prison before its defenders fired their last rounds of ammunition. The relief force arrived around 1600, which is 4 o'clock, and the SS were promptly defeated. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and here come the 142nd, supported by possibly more tanks from the 23rd Tank Battalion that Lee skipped ahead of to reach the castle, and it is some serious firepower coming in here. They're going to be ooh, battling the SS down here. It's going to be a pretty nasty fight. How are the SS doing over here, though? They're kind of trying to make their way into the castle itself, but some of the defenders here are still holding out. Where do we have Lee? Oh, he's not dead, but he's back here. Right there, Tank Commander Lee. A German soldier, a French prisoner, and a Czechoslovakian one. Why the hell not? the German and American up here, but they're still taking casualties. There's still a lot of Germans here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's even some people standing up on the wall over here. That's quite impressive. So there's definitely a whole section of at least a dozen SS soldiers over here trying to make their way into the castle. And back here we have some SS defenders trying to... Ooh, damn! Trying to stop the Americans from getting any, any closer, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Good positioning here by the American tanks. Tanky, tanky, tanky. For his service defending the castle, Lee received the Distinguished Service Cross. Uh, popular accounts of the battle have dubbed it the strangest battle of World War II. The battle was fought five days after Adolf Hitler had committed suicide and only two days before the signing of Germany's unconditional surrender. It was also the only battle where Americans and Germans fought alongside one another during the war. Look at the Americans making their way in here. They're taking a lot of fire, though. Not gonna lie. It's a cool position to sit up there inside. These SS soldiers don't play around, man. And I don't play about my paper. You know, these guys just... Patching up and all. They're counterattacking. What the hell are you guys ruining? Suicidal fanatic SS members. I swear that was friendly fire. 
damn, they're just peppering them with bullets. It's like they're running at them like suicide bombers, and they're just getting like destroyed by rounds. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> what are you guys doing? You're trying to surrender? You're trying to kiss them? I'm, I think they're running in some sort of panic. I, was that the last one? I think that was the last of the SS defenders. The rest of the Americans are coming through now. Move, move, move. I wasn't looking back here with the defenders, but they're still alive. A few Germans remaining. They must have been pardoned. I mean, definitely most of the Wehrmacht itself and a lot of high-tiering generals and stuff were actually allowed to continue serving in the German army afterwards. Of course, they were part of the, just the German army, but the SS had a way tougher time in the after-war period in terms of trials and counts of... of murders and other atrocities that they committed but uh, hope you enjoyed the battle of castle it a big shout out to mighty mapper one two three for providing this map and thank you whoever it was actually suggested it i can't remember but in the future i'm gonna try and keep an eye on that but uh, it was through snapchat it was like you know check this out it's a pretty cool fight i haven't seen done a video of it and i'm like wow no i haven't and it is really really cool and the map was then made and accurately delivered by um Mighty Mapper himself, and this is just fantastic looking. Based on realistic pictures and all that, I'm really happy it turned out the way it did. And uh, please stop suggesting battles of Stalingrad, Omaha Beach, and Kursk, and stuff that we've done a million times, like Iwo Jima and whatnot. Please, please check the channel for what I've done before or not, and then you won't waste your time. There's even an SS soldier just, it's like, I'm getting out of here. I wonder if that's Sebastian Bima, the guy who actually fled the, the castle previously, a few days before. Yeah, he's getting out. He is Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys soon. Ciao.